Hey everyone, it's Scott from Older and Wiser, and though we are primarily a travel channel, we do like to do tech reviews from time to time. And today we've got an exciting one because nope. we are going to... No. Nope. What? No, we're not going to do anything. You're going to go nope. over there. I'm taking over the channel. So we are going to do a tech review today, but it's photography related and that's my area of expertise. So today we are going to see how photos from a DSLR, this is an Icon D610, we're going to see how those rank against the new Apple iPhone 11 Pro. We're at a pumpkin patch today, we're going to do the same photos and see how they relate to each other and how they compare. So come along and let's check it out. Hello and welcome back. So. I have got the photos from the DSLR and the iPhone and I've got them ready to compare. So I want you to understand a few things. Um, my DSLR is a Nikon D610. It has 24 megapixels versus the 12 from my iPhone 11 Pro. It's got a full frame sensor. The iPhone does not have that. It has a 35 millimeter Sigma prime lens on it. Um, that was as close as I could get to, I think they're estimating that the, the lens on the iPhone is like 24 millimeter. So those are the differences. Now I did shoot in manual on the DSLR and I shot just regular iPhone camera. I didn't use a third party app to take any of these photos. So, and I also did not shoot in portrait mode. Um, I've had terrible luck with portrait mode. I think, you know, it, it does pretty good for what it is, but I, uh, I can't stand it when it misses like a part around the hair or things like that. It drives me crazy. All right. So let's see what we've got. Now these are the unedited versions of the photos on the top here of the pumpkin photo. You have the, um, the DSLR, the Nikon versus the iPhone photo on the bottom. Coloring is good in both of them. Obviously, because I have a the ability to shoot with an aperture wide open on the Nikon, I get that good bokeh in the background, whereas most everything in the iPhoto is sharp, and that's okay. Now here we have Malcolm in front of the, the tree farm sign. So the top one is with the DSLR, and the bottom one is with the iPhone. The, bot the iPhone kind of missed the color quite a bit. I think that it might have been overwhelmed by the orange and the pumpkins. That's okay, it happens. I get a little overwhelmed too. Okay, so on the tractor we have the DSLR here on the left and the iPhone on the right. And I have to tell you, the iPhone photo wins. He's got beautiful skin color. Everything is nice and sharp. I love the coloring on all of this. It beats the DSLR photo hands down, total and completely. All right, in front of the corn stalk, the DSLR photo on the left and the iPhone on the right. I'm not sure what happened with the iPhone. Um, everything seems very over-processed and it came right out of the phone looking this way. So everything seems very over-processed and way sharp um, and I do not like it at all. <laughs> so the DSLR photo wins on this one. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go into Lightroom where I have these photos, okay? And we're going to, these are unedited versions of the photos and we're gonna crop in on these. So I'm just gonna zoom in, um, there we go. And you can see now my, this is the DSLR, it missed focus a little bit on his face. That was my fault. Whereas on the iPhone, it's loading, loading, loading. That looks really good. Um, because it's a little bit wider back, if I were to zoom in to about the same, uh, crop ratio as I did on the DSLR, we start to see some pixelation in here. So, you know, you could print this one probably a little bit smaller, but I think if you, if you tried to print this large, you were going to have some issues with pixelation. So let's look at, um, all right, let's look at his little face here on the tractor. That's good. Nice and clear. Uh, okay, on the tractor photo on this one, let's zoom in there. Let's zoom into approximate. So again, we've got that pixelation going on there. It's not overwhelming and it's really only on the lighter colors. I don't see it quite as bad as the bottom or as the, the darker colors. So that's, that's good. 
Um, let's look at the iPhone photo in front of the corn stalk. Now, we have a lot of pixelation going on here. I, I really am not sure what happened. Um, you know, before I took each iPhone photo, I tapped on the screen and held down to make sure the focus was on his face. So it should have had the exposure and everything done correctly. Um, but we have a lot of pixelation going on there. Now on the, let it clear up here. Now on the, um, the DSLR photo, we don't have that. Now I did miss focus. I got, I got focus right here instead of on his little face, but there's no pixelation, right? If I wanted to zoom in like super, there we go. That's, there's my pixelation. So let's check out the, um, the pumpkin photo. Let's zoom that out first. Okay. Let's pick, let's pick right here. All right. So there we have that nice and clear tack sharp and the iPhone, obviously, cause it's a wider field. So I don't see hard. I see pixelation over here in the greens, but not so much on the oranges. And I wonder if that's cause it's very bright, vibrant and bright. Um, you're always going to see your, your pixelation and your noise worse in the darker colors than in the light. So overall quality comparable. I mean, you're not going to be able to print your iPhone photos large. You know, I, I think you might get away with some eight by tens, but nothing bigger than that. And obviously I haven't tested that. Whereas I know with my DSLR, I can print poster size photos and it's not going to be an issue. Um, sharpness. I mean, the iPhoto does a fantastic, and I haven't tried it in low light, but the iPhone does a wonderful job of getting sharp, focused pictures. Whereas I had, so it was raining a little bit, so I kept getting little drops of rain on the lens, and anybody that has a DSLR knows your focus, if you're doing autofocus, it's going to be, which I was, your autofocus is going to be off. So I did have some focusing issues, whereas the iPhone nailed it every single time. Um... One thing I will tell you uh, when comparing your DSLR to your brand new iPhone is my DSLR does shoot video, but it is not 4K video. My iPhone shoots 4K video and it's stabilized and it's beautiful, beautiful video quality. Whereas the quality of video on my DSLR is not even in the running to be compared to the iPhone. It's that bad. I, I wouldn't say it's bad, but it's just not near the high quality of 4k video that you can get from your iPhone pro. So photo shoot, would I use an iPhone 11 pro in a photo shoot? If I were out doing a photo shoot and I dropped my camera and it would not turn on anymore, I would try to finish that session using my iPhone. Um, you know, let me show you why I've got here some edited photos. Let me pop on out of these. So here we go. I edited these photos. So this one on the left is the DSLR and this one on the right is the iPhone. And because there was a lot of sharpness in this photo from the iPhone, I'm not still not crazy about it, but I would might possibly present this to a client if I had to once I edited it more in my style. Um, this photo with the tractor, absolutely. I would hand that over to a client. That is fun and wonderful. I might touch it up a little bit more, but this is, this is my color style. This is what I like. This is how I shoot. And I love this photo. Um, you know, I, I like it a little bit better than I like the, uh, the DSLR photo to tell you the truth. Now this one, um, <clears throat> because it was so orange, I did have problems with it, but here it is compared to the edited DSLR photo. So DSLR on top, iPhone on the bottom and my pumpkins. I like the DSLR photo better because it's got the blurred out background. Um, I tried to soften the background a little bit on the iPhone photo and I did, and it's fine. But this is not something that I would upload to, to stock photography. Like this, these photos are for stock photography. Um, and I would not upload the, the iPhone one as it is now. Maybe if I played with it a little bit more, possibly. 
So that concludes our comparison of the iPhone 11 Pro versus my Nikon D610 DSLR. I hope that you've gotten some information from this video. I hope I did this all right. Um, you know, we'll provide the files for the images so that you can take a look yourself if you want to. Um, leave us a comment. Let us know what you thought of the video, if you're planning on getting an iPhone to maybe replace your DSLR, if you're just a traveling, you know, if you're just going to use it on your travels and your daily adventures, we want to hear about it. Go ahead and subscribe to our channel. We try to put out a video every single week. We're mostly a travel channel, but we do some tech reviews and some fun recipes and daily adventures and things like that from time to time. And you might catch us on a YouTube live. We may have something fun to talk about. And uh, hit the like button. So, cause this is the first video that I've done. So show me some love. We'll see you next time.